Each of us begins our individual life as a fertilized egg or zygote. Via the reproductive organs, the female produces an egg cell, also called an ovum or gamete. And the male produces the fertilizing seed cell, also called a spermatozoon or sporophyte. When they fuse into one cell, the zygote, all of the necessary means and information required for the growth of a mature man or woman are present and with the proper nutrition and care we are the result in this program we will examine the male and female reproductive systems fertilization pregnancy and lactation <laughs> Our reproductive system is unique. Unlike other organ systems, the circulatory and digestive systems, for example, the reproductive system is largely inactive until puberty and is also the only organ system that is different in the male and female. Although the objective for both male and female reproduction is to create a new individual, the means by which this is accomplished, as well as the workload, varies significantly between the two sexes, as we shall see. The organs of the male reproductive system include the penis, scrotum, testes, duct system, and glands. The penis consists of a long shaft and enlarged tip called the glans penis. When the male is sexually aroused, the penis becomes erect and ready for intercourse. Erection is achieved as blood sinuses within the erectile tissue of the penis become filled with blood. The arteries of the penis are dilated while the veins are passively compressed so that blood flows into the erectile tissue under pressure. The urethra passes through the penis and opens to the outside. The main functions of the penis are urination and sexual behavior. The scrotum or scrotal sac is an external bag of skin and muscle containing the testes. It is an extension of the abdomen located between the penis and anus. The function of the scrotum appears to be to keep the testes at a temperature slightly lower than that of the rest of the body, as this is the ideal temperature for sperm growth. This is accomplished as the scrotum tightens, moving the testicles closer to the abdomen when it is cold, and relaxing, moving the testicles away from the abdomen when it is warm. At puberty, the base of the scrotum becomes covered with pubic hair. An average male possesses two testicles, or testes, located in the scrotum. The testes begin their development in the abdominal cavity, but descend into the scrotum during the last two months of fetal development. On top of these organs is a storage container for sperm that the testes has produced, called the epididymides. Inside each testicle, there are as many as a thousand tightly coiled tubules. The walls of the tubules are lined with specialized cells that continuously produce sperm cells, or spermatozoa. Each tubule, if straightened out, would be about 90 centimeters long. And all the tubules in a single testes, if straightened and laid end to end, would stretch about 900 meters, or half a mile long. The testes also produce a male hormone called testosterone, which is responsible for typical male characteristics, like body and facial hair, increased skeletal and muscle mass, and larynx size, which causes the deeper pitch of the male voice. Without testosterone, sperm would not develop properly. After puberty, sperm cells are produced inside the testes. Each spermatozoon is about 1 20th of a millimeter long 
and looks like a tadpole with a bulbous head and a long thread-like tail that represents 90% of the length of the cell. A normal male usually produces several hundred million sperm per day. Sperm are continually produced throughout a male's reproductive life, though production decreases with age. After sperm are created in the testes, they are stored in the epididymides. During sexual excitement, the sperm move from the epididymides through a duct called the vas deferens to the seminal vesicles, where sperm are mixed with fluid produced by the seminal vesicles and two other glands, the prostate gland and Cowper's glands. This mixture is called semen. The female reproductive system includes the vulva, or external genitalia, vagina, cervix, uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, and mammary glands. The external genital organs of the female collectively are called the vulva. They consist of the labia majora and labia minora, clitoris, opening of the urethra, and the opening of the vagina. The main functions involving the vulva are urination, sexual behavior, menstruation, and childbirth. The vagina is a muscular tube leading from outside of the body in towards the uterus. This is where semen from the male is deposited into the woman's body during sexual intercourse. The cervix joins with the vagina. Approximately half of the cervix is visible. The other half extends above the vagina beyond view. The uterus, also called the womb, is the major female reproductive organ. The uterus opens into the vagina via the cervix at one end and the fallopian tubes at the other end. Layers of smooth muscle, called myometrium, make up the structure of the uterus. The function of the uterus in reproduction is to accept a fertilized egg or ovum, which becomes implanted in the uterine lining or endometrium. The fallopian tubes connect the uterus to the ovaries where eggs or ova are produced. The ovaries also produce powerful hormones, principally estrogen and progesterone, which play an important role in the reproductive cycle as we shall see. At birth, each ovary contains roughly 500,000 ovarian follicles, also called graphene follicles. These follicles are the immature form of the ovum. Beginning at puberty, the ovaries normally allow one ova to mature every 28 to 30 days. This process is called the menstrual cycle. In the first half of the menstrual cycle, levels of estrogen rise and make the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, grow and thicken. At about day 14, one follicle breaks open to release its egg cell in a process known as ovulation. Smooth muscle lining the fallopian tube transports the egg by peristaltic contractions to the uterus, and progesterone levels rise and help prepare the uterine lining for pregnancy. This trip can take hours or days. If the egg becomes fertilized by a sperm cell and attaches itself to the uterine lining, the woman becomes pregnant. If the egg is not fertilized, it either dissolves or is absorbed into the body. If pregnancy does not occur, estrogen and progesterone levels drop and the thickened lining of the uterus is shed during the menstrual period. During sexual intercourse, about 4 milliliters of semen, containing as many as 400 million sperm cells, are deposited in the female's vagina. 
most of these sperm will die within 48 hours. If fertilization takes place, the sperm usually meet the ovum in the fallopian tube, requiring the sperm cells to swim from the upper vagina through the cervix and across the length of the uterus before reaching the fallopian tube, a considerable distance compared to the size of the sperm cell. Once the ovum fuses with a single sperm cell, its cell membrane changes, preventing fusion with other sperm. This process ultimately leads to the formation of a cell called a zygote, the union of an ova and a sperm. Each cell in our body contains 46 chromosomes, except for the female egg cell and the male sperm cell. These cells, called sex cells or gametes, each contain 23 chromosomes. Chromosomes are made up of smaller units called genes. Genes carry the coded information for every person's heredity in molecules called DNA. This genetic code is the blueprint for building a new person with characteristics from the father and the mother. Genes determine what color eyes a person will have, what color hair, how tall, how big their feet will be, even personality traits and predispositions to disease. Two chromosomes, the X and Y chromosomes, determine the sex of a person. Ova possess only X chromosomes, while sperm have either an X or a Y chromosome. An X from the female gamete and an X from the male gamete would produce a female offspring. Likewise, an X from the female gamete and a Y from the male gamete will produce a male offspring. During fertilization, the two sets of chromosomes combine. Within hours of fertilization, the zygote begins to develop and travels along the fallopian tube, reaching the uterus in approximately three days. When the zygote reaches the uterus and implants in the endometrium, the female is said to be pregnant. For the first eight weeks, the developing organism is called an embryo. During this period, cells differentiate into specific body parts and organs. A temporary organ implanted in the uterine wall and present only during pregnancy, called the placenta, provides the fetus with oxygen and nutrients and takes away waste, such as carbon dioxide, via the umbilical cord. Beginning at week 9, the embryo is called a fetus. By week 20, halfway through the pregnancy, the fetus is about 20 centimeters in length. The mother can feel the fetus moving and a fetal heartbeat can be detected with a stethoscope. An average fetus is considered to be full term at 37 weeks, is approximately 47 to 54 centimeters in length, and can weigh between 3 and 3.5 kilograms. During pregnancy, a woman's respiratory and cardiovascular systems experience extensive changes. Her metabolism is altered, as well as the functions of her gastrointestinal, reproductive, and urinary systems. Even her integumentary, muscular, and skeletal systems change. The growing uterus begins to take space normally designated for the organs in the abdominal and thoracic cavities. The mother's diaphragm becomes elevated, and her rib cage expands outwards. Oxygen consumption, cardiac output, heart rate, and blood volume all increase dramatically during pregnancy. Pregnant women can also expect to gain approximately 11 to 16 kilograms of pregnancy-related weight. This consists of fluids, fat deposits, and increased size of the uterus, plus the weight of the fetus. A typical childbirth begins with contractions of the uterus. The frequency and duration of these contractions varies, but a woman is said to be in active labor when three or four contractions occur every 10 minutes and are about 60 seconds in duration, and the cervix has dilated to more than three centimeters. The contractions accelerate in frequency and strength typically every two minutes 
and lasting 70 to 90 seconds, and the cervix is now dilated 8 to 10 centimeters. The baby is expelled from the womb through the vagina by both the uterine contractions and by the additional efforts of the mother. Babies are most commonly born head first. In some cases, the baby is born breech, meaning either the feet or buttocks are descending first. After the delivery, the uterus expels the placenta. Mammary glands secrete milk and are characteristic of mammals, a word that derives from the word mammary. Hormones control the development of mammary glands. Estrogen promotes formation, while testosterone inhibits it. A hormone called prolactin is stimulated by estrogen and acts on the mammary glands to produce milk after the baby is born. A substance called colostrum is secreted in late pregnancy and for the first few days after giving birth. True milk secretion begins a few days later. The breasts produce milk based on supply and demand, how often a child feeds, and how much milk he or she consumes determines how much milk will be produced. All of us begin life as a zygote, a single fertilized cell. Contained in this one cell are all the necessary instructions or recipes for building a unique human being, as well as all the tools and materials required to get the job done. Every organ system that we have studied in this series has its origins in this one cell. And as we have seen, the human reproductive system is responsible for its creation and initial nurturing.